I have the only amount of heartburn, honey, the only amount of heartburn from eating that white bread. Okay, so we're gonna try to get through this video together. I wanna talk to you guys about keeping cats happy in a small space because as you know, we live in an 88 square foot bedroom um, as the entire apartment, me, partner, cat. And before this, we lived in a 60 square foot van. So I know a thing or two about keeping my soon to be eight year old cat happy. Now the first thing it's important for us all is a routine. Everybody needs a routine. Every animal on the planet, whether or not it looks like they have a routine, does have a routine. Um, granted, most people's routine revolves the basic. Um, and a lot of animals don't do as many things for pleasure as humans do. So we tend to fill up our days a lot more than what it looks like for a pet. Animals often get depression and anxiety, restlessness, sort of recklessness from not being on a routine. And people often wonder like, why is this specific animal misbehaving? But it's like, girl, do you have them on a routine? Probably not. And so they're gonna be misbehaving. Along with routine is the importance of scheduled feeding, scheduled feedings. Um, most people do not have grazing animals as pets because I think the most common pets people have are cats and dogs. I mean, granted there are a few other ones under there, but I think they're cats and dogs, so they're not really grazers. So uh, as you know, cats with me specifically, they do the whole, we're gonna go hunting, we're gonna catch an animal, we're gonna kill an animal, we're gonna eat the animal. That's literally, they're about that life on a daily basis. So. Um, you have to sort of play to their instincts and if you're if they're constantly just eating kibble all day long 24 hours a day They have access to food all the time. It's so damaging to their instincts um, it, I feel like it makes them super miserable. They also get chunky. They get UTIs. They get hip arthritis later on They get a lot of issues free feeding is just like the bane I think of all existences it's like the thing that you should not do if you have if you're taking care of an animal. There's also this like longer tether that is important to note when you are doing scheduled feedings. If they're just free feeding all day long, they kind of have a relationship with the bowl more than you. But if you are their food source, right? Like mostly Dimitri actually feeds cats the most because the food that we feed cats is super clean. Like it's dehydrated and it has minimal ingredients. It's human grade. Um, so it's quite expensive but she doesn't like eating it on her own. If I go bring in some cheap stuff, I'm not gonna drop any names and disrespect any brands, but if I go get anything at my local Petco or PetSmart, she's gonna eat it by herself like in a swallow. She's gonna just, and that's it, the food is gone. But if it comes, when it comes to feeding her this like super healthy food, she does not wanna eat it by herself. Granted, she will. She will sometimes, like it's so rare, but she really likes to be spoon fed out of a silver spoon, I'm not even kidding. Um, so I wanna just say that when you're feeding them this food and they're like anticipating at these specific times that they're gonna eat and that you're gonna bring them that food, it makes the relationship so much stronger. Combing is also super important because it shows them that you love them. I mean, you're taking the time out to groom them in a day. But aside from that, it's also super important to get up close and personal with your pets. You can find scars and scabs this way, new things that you've never felt before, bumps, potential tumors. Um, you can find bugs on them. It's very important to comb them because it has a practical purpose while also having a loving purpose at the same time. And within that also comes petting. So petting is it pretty much has the same exact benefits to combing, although combing is a little bit more practical. Uh, for instance, like Cash, she has um she has about three different combs she has a furminator um which is a de-shedder and we help her out in the summer to get rid of some of her undercoat so she's not that hot um the other one that she has is a flea comb because we take her out all the time and so we have to take all the little fleas out when she gets them although this year she didn't it was kind of like the first year that she did not it was so strange um and then the the third thing that she has is a toothbrush which if you wet it slightly it feels like their mother's tongue so that is like a direct act of grooming and loving on them and she loves like a little wet toothbrush, like a used one, one that you don't use anymore. It's free, you have it already, do it. They're gonna love it. The next one is so weird, I know it is, but bear with me, it's actually talking to your pets. Now, I do like a baby voice with Cass and so does Dimitri, we both do like a specific baby voice, um, but she knows her name, like if I call her, she's actually in that box up there, if you see it. Um, but we, when we call her, she responds to her name 
and also she knows what certain things means like specifically treats and you know when it's time for her to do tricks and stuff she is ready um and we just feel like when, when we first got Cass and her sister we didn't we kind of treated them a bit more like cats than we do now now I kind of treat her like another being and we feel a lot more connected and in that is talking to her in the same vein we also sing to her and we feel like she loves it like she just starts rolling over and stretching and she wants us to pet her she's making biscuits and it's just so cute like if you don't talk to your pets now like as another being you have to try it it's it'll take a while to see the difference but you will see the difference eventually and we we haven't gone back like we feel so connected to her okay Playtime obviously is in the top five most like essentials for what you're supposed to do like with your pet, your animal, your fur baby because it's not playing for them. It actually is exercising their skill set, their base, their basic survival skill set. Um, Cass's number one thing to play with are wand toys, you know, with an extender and like a little toy at the end and she likes to just sit there and hunt it for a while she's actively watching it she likes to swipe it run after it kick the wall like she'll kick off the wall and then she'll run somewhere else hide under the mattress she'll just like run all over the whole room and into the hallway into the garage she'll leave she'll be panting so it's just like very important because in that moment she is like letting everything go and just feeling like she's hunting this toy and it's like amazing exercise for the mind she's practicing her skills even though i don't want her to use those skills outside <laughs> she's still practicing them all the time and it's just the top five most important things it's like this is what she's put on earth to do um we all have these certain things she has to feed herself she has to groom herself she has to there's like five things that she has to do there's five things we have to do that's one of them and so it's important that you fulfill that for them oh my gosh windows 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 even in the van we paid 500 dollars when we had the van to put two back windows in that were able to open with screens that were tinted i know kind of a mistake but um we got the windows anyway and i wanted to make sure that we did that and then in this bedroom that we live in we at least have one window i totally wish we had two like maybe one right here or one in front of us so that some little cross breeze could happen but alas just one window anyways the reason why they're important is because they're so important for the little couch potato kitty tv uh they feel like they're watching the birds outside, the leaves, all of the trees like in the wind, they feel the breeze on their face if you're able to open it with the screen. They uh, smell all that, the air, the smells of their environment, they're sunbathing. It's just essential and if you can put a bird feeder out there, even better. But make sure that like the birds are protected and like both everybody involved is protected. Um, we don't have a bird feeder because there's actually big trees in front of our window so they'll naturally come by anyway. Um, so yeah. So something that happens like where a lot of people hate cats, they don't want cats, they don't like them, they get rid of cats, it's pretty crazy, is they don't like cats scratching up their furniture and being on their furniture. Um, so I'm going to say, the reason there's three reasons why cats like to be on your furniture, they like to scratch your furniture. Number one is that they like to break their nails off um, because their nails actually one grows through and it splits the other one that was there previously so like when the nails when and they don't grow like ours like ours just goes straight and it just keeps growing and growing and growing no it's like they had this sharp curved nail when the next one's ready it's actually going through the middle of that so when they're scratching uh, they're actually taking off that the pieces of nails that are hanging um, that's why you often see them biting their like their little toenails and their nails all the time um, because they're trying to take that off so that's number one number two is that they're marking territory not in the way where it's like i'm pissing on everything they're not doing that they're like they're putting their they have scent glands on their little whisker pads they have scent glands on their hands that's like some of the and also on the side of their body that's like the strongest places that they have scent glands so they want whatever you that your most important furniture like your couch your bed they want where your body has been, where your scent is, they want to share that space with you as well. Number three is that they want to stretch. Usually when they're scratching upward, they're actually stretching their whole entire body. Like they're getting a good stretch, almost like hanging on their hands a little bit. So that's why they like sturdier things like couches because they're so heavy and big. And a lot of people don't provide adequate um, cat trees and stuff for their cats. So let's go on into the different materials that you want to look at because obviously you like variety, they like variety too. Um, so some different materials that you can explore when providing different furniture, um, maybe to put next to your furniture is 
Um, sisal, cardboard, carpet, that's another good one. And make sure when you're doing this as well, you're setting up different opportunities for them. So you're doing some vertical, some horizontal, some diagonal. You're giving them different options of heights and widths. You have to discover your cat's preferences just like you discovered your preferences for your own house. I know it took me a really long time to figure out everything that I like. Um, but the funny thing is, um, this is so unnecessary to say, but like I love um, natural woods. I love like white. I feel like I can see every. I can see bugs on white. I can see stains, and so I'm more likely to like really be able to clean something if it's white. And the third thing that I like is like wicker. Like I love like wicker and sea grass and like woven things. That's like what I like. It took me a long time to realize, you know, because you be trying to follow other people's styles, but we all have our own style. So just like we have our own styles and purposes for the stuff that we like, the textures we feel comfortable with. So do pets. Now. To, to add on to that right is if you don't want to buy them you know furniture or like a lot of furniture you don't want to break the bank you could turn your furniture into their furniture and let me explain for a second um so you could actually put a uh, varying furniture pieces next to each other like a nightstand going into an armoire going into like a shelf above your window so that they have you know because maybe your cat likes hanging out in trees and they like being up above so that that's for sure what cats likes because Usually you're gonna find her somewhere on the wall. She loves just hanging out at the top. People come in the room. We come in the room, she's kind of looking down for a second, observing the situation, she goes back to sleep. So some people, some cats like being on top, some cats like being in a cave, it's called cave dwelling, tree dwelling. Some of them like being in a cave, so they like lower spaces. So maybe you could like open up a little drawer that, that they can go to or like cut a little hole in the side of your furniture. But anything that you can do to make, to share your furniture with theirs or have some kind of double purpose, that's awesome. Um, because like this is like my favorite section is like DIYing a house that has cat furniture in it that maybe is like unassuming like people would like don't think like your cat is ever in that thing but they are um, and so another thing that I thought of for this video is if you still have like a footboard which I don't have a headboard or a footboard um, but if you do you could actually staple like a beautiful piece of carpet to the to the front of the the footboard and they'll scratch it but like it's also cute and it'll like barely wear down because carpet is so tightly woven so you'll be good this one is my favorite thing and I, it was something that I always try to do when I first got like Cass and Vam um, but I kind of failed at it a lot of times and that is training your cat and like teaching your cat tricks um, it may be easier with a dog I'm not sure I was trying to train my neighbors dogs but it wasn't easy you know what they speak the the dogs respond to Portuguese and Spanish so I never know with a command if it's gonna be in English Spanish or Portuguese so that's like the, the other challenge but it wasn't as easy to train them as I thought it was gonna be <laughs> um, but it's super easy to train cast it just took me a long time to figure out how to do it but the reason why this is so important is because first of all it's another way to bond with you know with your baby um, and the second thing is it is such a brain tease like it makes them think about what it is that you're asking for what it is that you want so that they can work for your approval like yay and they can work for the reward which is the treat and they love that so some high quality treats for this is gonna be like super important I tried to do it with like kibble once and she was like no ma'am I'm not rolling over for that <laughs> I was trying to save money but anyway um so so the thing about tricks so far Cass knows like paw which is like this she knows high paw she knows um she's learning rollover right now it is very stressful it takes with the harder tricks it takes like 45 days in a row every night to do it so it is dedication but it's wonderful because again having that routine she she gets these treats and she does these tricks right before bed like right before we're about to go to sleep so that's like the last thing she's working her brain really hard she doesn't bother us to like 6 a.m for food and like i said she's on scheduled feedings but going back to the tricks that she knows um she knows up she knows um lay down i feel like she can hear me oh and then the last one that she knows is spin that was the one that i was teaching her before yeah i think she totally knows that i'm saying all this yeah she's coming down um anyways so <laughs> I don't want her to get me for treats but anyways yeah so spin actually she learned right before um rollover and rollover is taking a long time for her to get so yeah i want to note this very serious thing though about um training and and doing tricks 
is that um well be gentle do your research all that kind of stuff because you don't want this to be a very stressful and like bad moment for them but i think that training and doing kind of like puzzles and stuff like that with your cat i totally want to get puzzles like dog puzzles forever it's so expensive um but i want to note that i think that this could turn around a cat that's depressed a cat that generally feels like they don't have anything to live for because their parents are super boring um and don't do anything with them uh, a cat that's very stressed that's recently had a home change i feel like this is a way for them to get grounded and to like get some confidence about themselves just like you would get confidence if you're learning a new skill this next one mm -hmm, mm -hmm, is actually um catnip and cat grass if you can provide that for your cat um, I think that that would be really cool. We've tried like fresh grown cat grass for cats. She does not like it. Like she does not like it. We've grown it from seed and we bought a plant. She doesn't like it. So these are not going to be for every cat for sure. Um, because our other cat was more of the cat. She liked a lot of carbs. She liked a lot of kibble. She hates kibble. Um, and that cat also liked eating plants and stuff like that. And Cass doesn't really care. She just likes the grass that's outside in the backyard and like out at the park. Um, but catnip, Cass goes crazy for catnip. Um, so this is really fun because it kind of makes her go a little wild and she'll like start attacking all of her toys and like just laying down and just burning all this energy and relaxing I guess. Um, and I guess it's pretty natural because koalas naturally get high off eucalyptus and also big cats are known to love catnip. Um, and catnip grows freely out there in the world so I don't know I guess it's natural but yeah we give it to her. <laughs> only in fresh form now if your cat can handle it i would suggest another companion um Cass hates i think almost all other animals on the planet um i think she tolerates other humans yeah but she does not like other like little fur animals so i'm just like oh man but if your cat gets winged i totally think this helps with like boredom and separation anxiety when you leave the house um you have to be careful though about like hierarchy because sometimes one cat can definitely bully the other one and it just like snowballs from there so it is something you have to be careful with but i have not been successful in um introducing cats to another cat um and i think she's scared of dogs yeah because we had an incident where our neighbor's dogs were just let out into the back there was three because their friend came and like he let out all three dogs into the back and we were in the back with Cass and um she was so scared she was like swiping and hissing and it was like not pretty so now she's kind of paranoid walking outside every time like she's just like checking and just being sure that we're both coming up the stairs we're here to go out um so that's really sad and now i'm just like oh no i kind of like wanted a dog in the future but i don't know now but if you can swing it i definitely suggest it and the last tip that i'm going to give and I know it's not for everybody, but I totally think it should be because it's so normalized for dogs that it should, it needs to like definitely be nor normalized for all animals. I'm just going to say like for the record, if I had any other animal except for fish, I would totally take every single animal outside. A bunny, a snake, I don't know how I would swing that one because <laughs> I can't see them being in a harness. But yeah, I would take every single animal out if I can because it's like all we're not even supposed to be indoors we're not supposed to be in a house you know what i mean like no animal is supposed to have like this level of shelter where they're like never going outside in their lives but it, i know it's super complicated for some people because like cities for instance that that's just too packed i don't know how i would swing it there either but anyways taking cats outside is like super important because of everything i said about the window being able to um you know smell all the freshies um, but hopefully it's like quiet where you are because if it's not that's very stressful cats could deal with a lot of loud noises because we were all in the hood for her whole life until two years ago um and we moved to a very quiet place and um but the but the things that are still loud here she hates them are lawnmowers and trucks and also um she doesn't like vacuums we don't vacuum but our landlord does and she hates the vacuum but anyway, so a peaceful environment, if you can swing it, it's super important, just like everything I said with the window, but the extra added benefits are being able to eat the grass, being able to earth, which is being able to kind of like walk barefoot on the soil, um, and just being able to feel all the breeze all over your body, to be able to watch, you know, all the birds and the animals up close and kind of hunt, but not really allow them to actually hunt, but just still get that like get worked up and kind of like watch TV and like I guess how a guy would watch like sports right they began worked up 
And on that note, uh, we also used to take her out in a stroller to a park. So if we if we couldn't like make it to a quiet area because we lived in the projects before, we actually just used to load them up in the car with the stroller and then stroll them in the park. And then if nobody was around, we would go to the middle of a patch of grass and just start letting them out loosely. Vam hated it. Cass was like, I'm intrigued. So different personalities is gonna, it's gonna definitely vary per person or per pets. And that is all I have to say for this video. I